Welcome to Bible study, everyone. Hope every hope you're having a good week. You remember when you were in school that you used to take field trips? I grew up in Fort Worth, Texas, and I remember in elementary school that we took a field trip to Ms. Barrett's Bakery. Ms. Barrett was a lady in the central part of Fort Worth that started making bread uh, in her kitchen. Well, it developed into the largest bakery into, in the whole city. And everybody enjoyed Miss Beard's bread. Well, we went and we watched the machines and all that sort of thing. It was fascinating. At the end, they gave us a little miniature loaf, which I really enjoyed, all the kids did. Well, remember years ago, God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 18, I'll read it for you, the first six verses. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. Now you're quite aware, as, as am I, in ancient antiquity, the potter's wheel is one of the oldest uh, things that was made, invented, and of course that's how they made the pottery in the, out of the clay. Then I went down to the potter's house and there was making something at the wheel and the vessel that he made of clay was marred. It was marred in his hands so the potter took and made another vessel as it seemed good to him to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. You know, there's a lesson for you and me in the 21st century, though this man lived in the 6th and 7th centuries B.C. He did his prophecies in the city of Jerusalem. He tried his best to get those folks to shape up. They wouldn't do it, and tragically, they were conquered by Babylon in 587 and carried into captivity. But he, previous to that, in this passage, said, hey, if you folk will do as God asks, some things wonderful will happen. Let's suggest the truths that you and I ought to walk around in this passage. The first one is, God is our divine potter. He is an expert in making human beings. You remember the scripture says, and God made man and breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living personality. The psalmist says, it is he who hath made us and not we ourselves. I teach a Bible study on Thursday morning, have for a number of years and several doctors are a part of that and several times they have shared Preacher, you need to understand the human body is a miracle. If you study anatomy as you have to in med school in the first year, you'll find that the human body is a miracle in itself. And God is that maker. It is he who hath made us physically. But you know, our human vessel has been marred by rebellion and sin. You and I remember that in Genesis chapter 3, the first man and the first woman did not do what God asked them to, and it cost them. And if we don't do what we should, it cost us. Sin is not harmful because it is forbidden. It is forbidden because it is harmful. But God, like the potter, does not throw us away, nor did the potter. When the clay was marred, he took and reshaped it and made something wonderful of it. And that's what Christian conversion can do to you and to me. If any person is in Jesus Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Vita and I were summer missionaries years ago in the island of Jamaica. We had an 18-year-old boy who worked in our Bible school. We had only been to Orica Mesa on the north coast of Jamaica for one week, but he was very helpful. He was a part of the youth group, 
and I had in that youth group an amazing combination. We had about 40 young people, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 from Warwick Cabasa, but you know what? We had about as many adults also in that group. And we had a great time and played and studied the Bible and sang songs and everything you do in vacation Bible school. And on the closing night, after we had had all the folk come, the parents came and we had, uh, you know, the baccalaureate or whatever you want to call it. And about 10 o'clock, we were sitting in the pastor's home up on the side of the mountain, right on the northern coast of Jamaica. And Vincent Clemenson, the 18-year-old, appeared. And when he did, he walked up on the porch. We were kind of startled. We were listening to WFAA star reporter giving the 10 o'clock news out of Dallas, Texas, amazingly enough. And the pastor's wife bounced out of her chair and literally double-timed across the room and says, you can't come in here, Mon. You're an evil mom. We didn't know Benny from anybody else. We'd only been in town a week. And he says, I want to speak to one of the students. And so I, I wasn't, I, Rita and I, my wife heard it. And we, and we said, Benny, can we help you? And he said, I would like to speak to you. And I said, she said, not in here. I said, well, I'll go out there. And the long and the short of it was, he had been living a life that was far from moral. He had an illegitimate child. He had brought a girl to live in his grandmother's home with him, and she objected, and he beat her. I didn't know all this. So we walked down by the side of the, literally, the church and the school, sat down on a great big rock, and he looked at me and said, I've tried all the ways of my friends and they've not brought me any happiness. And I've seen in you students, there were four of us, this week something I want for myself. And I said, Vinny, has anybody ever explained to you how to become a Christian in language you can understand? He said, no, mom. Everybody's a mom if you go to Jamaica. And so we shared with him how Christ came, died for our sins, and what it took for you and me to trust in him, to believe and confess our sins. He did that. And the next Sunday morning, he walked in the church, much to the amazement of all the people. He came forward at the end of the service when we gave the invitation. And he says, I'd like to say something. I said, all right. So when the music stopped and the people were seated and the people were looking at him and he says, you all know me and they all shook their heads. He says, I am not the same young man that you saw last week. I met Jesus right out by the rock there between the church and the school. And Mr. Sherman talked with me and told me how to become a Christian. His life was changed. He became a preacher and he became a leading pastor in the Jamaica Baptist Union. He left us several years ago. His son is now a doctor and a deacon in the Wilshire Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. That's what Jesus can do for our lives. He's like the potter and our lives are marred but we can be reshaped and find a new meaning and a new purpose. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it super abundantly. As the apostle Paul found on the Damascus road and he later wrote to the Philippian church, for me to live is Christ and die is gain. So I hope that you and I can take a page out of this lesson today out of Jeremiah, just as God can reshape a person's life as the potter reshapes the clay and makes a vessel, he can use us if we'll merely commit ourselves to him and serve him. As the Westminster Catechism says, what is the ultimate purpose of man? To love, enjoy, and serve God forever. I love Bill and Gloria Gaither's songs, 
And one of those songs is something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful of my life. And he can do that for you and for me as we believe in him and follow him as he said. May we pray? Our Father, we pray that whoever is watching today, if they need to be reshaped, will place themselves in the master potter's hands. And just as the potter in the days of Jeremiah shaped a vessel as it pleased him, God will shape their lives as it pleases the Lord. And they too will be thrilled with knowing there's no more guilt, there's no more condemnation, and there is one who sticketh closer than a brother who will never, ever forsake us. So may we say with Paul, for us to live as Christ and die as gain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I surely hope that you have a wonderful day today. And in a sense of humor, do you know why Eskimo women always wash in tide? They do because in Alaska, it's too cold to wash outside. Have a good day.